22 to 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life. The Son of Man shall give unto you, for him that God the Father sealed. And we want to use this tonight with the help of the Lord. We want to preach about satisfaction in Jesus. Yeah. And he is the only one that can satisfy anyone's soul. Yeah. Let's go ahead and look to him in prayer. We'll ask his blessing tonight. Reverend Coker, will you pray, please? Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We ask you to... Help Pastor Polk if he preaches your word. Speak to hearts and accomplish your will in this service tonight. Amen. 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 I think all of us can testify or can acknowledge, I should say, the fact that this time that started out as a celebration of the birth of Christ has become very um, carnal. And focused on gifts and material things. Now we give because we love. And we appreciate those who do the same in return. Amen? Amen. There's nothing wrong with giving. Okay, if we do it out of a right heart and we are trying to be a blessing to people, that's a good thing. We're not against that. But we are against taking the focus off of where the focus should be brother came in the other night and he had a sweater on and it had Christmas and it had the Christ in parentheses like hey this is what we're going to leave in here yes. Amen. Yes. it's not Xmas not right now. Okay? it's not happy holidays oh. right. it's Merry Christmas yes. Amen. because we celebrate the fact that God gave his son, as our brother sang there tonight. I really enjoyed that song. That was a blessing. Okay, God gave his son. Who else has given their son for me? God gave his son. His son gave his life. And he gave it for the purpose, brother and sister, of you and I finding out what life is really all about. Life is not about things. Life is not about possessions. Life is not about what we can uh, get and what we can amass, brother and sister. Jesus tells us that a man's life does not consist of the things that he possesses. But thank God tonight we can possess the Son of God Amen. and we can know what life is all about. Amen? Amen. We can know why we are living and who we are living now let's get into this Bible setting. I think most of you are familiar with it because we're teaching out of the Gospel of John. And it really wasn't that long ago that we were in this part uh, of the Gospel of John learning about the bread of life. Jesus made a statement to them there that he was the bread of life. Amen? We know that they had followed him and he had compassion on them. And God is very compassionate. God is very gracious. God wants to meet all of our needs. Okay, according to his riches in glory. Amen? Amen? But that's not why we seek God. And that's not why we follow God. We don't follow him as they did. They began to follow him for the fishes and the loaves. They began to follow him for what they could get from him. We're not following God to get things from God. Amen? Amen. Thank God, brother and sister. God's got something more important for you and I than things. Now, God does bless us. Yes. We thank God for that. God is good to his children. That's not the motive, and that's not the reason that we follow God. We follow God, brothers and sisters. We love him yes. because he first loved us. Amen? Amen? He first loved us. Well, Jesus had fed them, and he knew about all of their needs, just as he does with you and I. We seek first the kingdom of God. We are told in the word of God that all of these things will be added unto us. God will take care of you. And he gives us an example of the fowls of the air. And he says that not one of them falls to the ground 
without the Father knowing about it. He also tells us that they're fed. But it says God takes care of them. And aren't we of more value than all the sparrows, all the birds yes. upon the face of the earth? Yes, we are. Yes, we are the ones that were made in the image of God. Yes. We are the ones, brother and sister, that they are the heir of all things. Yes. We are the ones that Jesus came to die and to redeem. He came to redeem mankind. And everything was made, everything else that was made, was made for the enjoyment and for the pleasure of mankind. What did he do once he made it all? He gave it all to Adam, and he gave him dominion over it, brother and sister. He told him to subdue uh, all of it and to have dominion over it. It was for him to enjoy. It's for you and I to enjoy. Amen? Amen. Okay, what's the point, Pastor? We are the ones, brother and sister, that all creation is made for. It's not the other way around. I think sometimes people get it wrong. You see them and they treat their animals better than they do people. Okay, it's not to be that way. Amen? We are, to, we are to have a compassion, as Jesus did, upon one another. A compassion for one another. We see it in our society and in our world. We see people that need help, don't we? We see people, and I'm not just talking about material things. And I, We do that, you know. We, we help people. We see people that are in need. Or we help them. We try to do things for them, whatever we can do. But you know, there's something greater. There's a greater need in the lives of all men and women. People need Jesus. Yes. See, without a Savior, brother, sister, without, without our sins being washed away, without being forgiven and being born again, we have an eternity separated from God. We have nothing but condemnation and judgment to look forward to. But oh, thank God, if a person is brought to the Lord Jesus Christ, if they are willing to repent of their sin and to put their faith in Him, they've got an eternity of the love and the blessing of Almighty God. God can change lives. Jesus came to change the lives of men and women, to set captives free, to deliver people, brother and sister, to take those that are bound and to absolutely liberate them from their bondage. Whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. Amen. People can literally be, be set free. And it's what they need. We see it all around us, don't we? People bound by sin. People bound by lust. People bound, brother and sister, by this world and the things of this world. But oh, thank God, we've got the right message, church. We've got the light of the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we yeah. preach this afternoon, we need to let this light shine in this dark world in which we live. Amen. And we need to let people know these people thought that they were maybe doing God a favor by uh, coming to him. They had it wrong. But sister, we're not doing God some favor. And the Bible teaches us if we have done all. Has anybody in here ever done all? I haven't. He said we are an unprofitable servant. Okay? After having done all, brother and sister, we've done everything. We are an unprofitable servant. Our, atti our attitude should be, brother and sister, no, I'm not doing God some kind of favor by living for him or allowing him to save me. Jesus is doing me a favor. Amen. He is being gracious Amen. to yes, me. Sir. And I owe him so much. I can't pay the debt that I owe. If I live a thousand years, I can never pay the debt that I owe to the Lord. Brother and sister, all I can do is live my life for him to the best of my ability. To do what the Lord has called me to do. What God wants me to do in my life. And you know, God's got a plan for each and every one of us. There are no exceptions. There are no, well, uh, I'm a Christian, but I'm not one of those one of those witnessing Christians. I'm not one of those Christians who obey the Bible. I'm not one of those Christians who is going to let God tell me what to do. Brother and sister, that's the only kind of Christian that there is. Amen. He is the Lord of all. As we exhorted this afternoon, we begin to talk there. We begin to talk about Herod and how he did not want to allow. There were other kings 
that came and said, we want to know, we want to see this king of the Jews. He is the king. Yes, we may be mighty men from where we are. We may have come a long way, but there's somebody greater than us. There's somebody above us, and we come to worship him and to submit ourselves under the true king, the king of kings, and the Lord of Lords. Amen. That's what we need to do, church. We need to submit ourselves under the lordship of Jesus. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? We can do what God wants us to do. We can obey the Lord. He began to teach them, brother and sister, they were looking for fishes and loaves, but God had so much more for them. You know, I hate that. I hate to think that's all God could do. Man, I don't even know if they're open anymore, but if I want fishes and loaves, I can go down Long John Slip Silver or something <laughs> and get fishes and loaves. Yeah. I need more than fishes and loaves. That's right. Amen. I need something in my soul. Yeah. I need the bread of life. Amen. I need Amen. Jesus. Amen. I need him to sustain me. I need to, him to give me spiritual strength every day of my life. Brothers and sisters, they were lacking this in their life. And he began to teach them about it. And there were those who got offended and those who went away. Brother and sister, they, they uh, only wanted the natural. They only wanted what, what they could, could eat and what they could see. But God's got so much more, brother and sister, for each and every one of us. He said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst, because Jesus, Jesus will satisfy your soul. Amen. He will satisfy that inner man or woman. And when we know, brother and sister, that things are right between us and God, we have a satisfaction in our soul. These other things really just do not matter. He is that bread of life. And he came to give that life a ransom for each and every one of us. There were those who went away. And they didn't walk with Jesus anymore. How sad. To have the opportunity to walk with the Lord, but to go away. Because God told us something that we didn't want to hear. Huh? Because God told us you got your focus on the wrong thing. You're looking at the natural when you need to be looking at the spiritual. I've got something greater for you than some natural fish and some natural loaves. I've got something greater for you than material blessing, than physical blessing in this world. And thank God for that. That We appreciate that. But brother and sister, there's something more. There's something more that God has for each and every one of us. Brother and sister, he didn't change what he taught because they went away. He looked at others and he said to them, will you go away also? And Peter responded, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. That's the bread we're looking for, Jesus. I've been eating natural bread since I can remember, since I was a little baby. And you get hungry again. But you came along and you began to feed me with the manna from heaven. You began to feed me with the word of Almighty God that satisfied another hunger that I had in my life. It began to satisfy my soul. There's no one else I can look to. There's nowhere else I can look. You have the words of eternal life. And we know and we are sure that thou art that Christ. The son of the living God. Peter knew. Now, Peter had done a lot. Peter had, had been a fisherman. Peter had been a leader among the apostles. All of these things. He had seen a lot take place, brother and sister. But he knew there was no satisfaction in the things of the world and in sin. Later on, brother and sister, yes, he, he had failures in his life like we all uh, have had at times. But you know what, brother and sister, when God saved him and he was converted and then after he was filled with the Holy Ghost, what do we see Peter doing? We see Peter proclaiming the word of God. We see him with boldness, just like Jesus said, brother and sister, he was bold. He was unafraid, though it cost him 
eventually his life. Though he was locked up, brother and sister, at times, it didn't matter, brother and sister. He was, he was breaking bread. He was letting people know. People were hearing the word of God. Yeah. The lights were being turned on in the hearts yeah. and the minds of men and women. Yeah. And people yeah. were being saved. Yeah. As Jesus said when he went by to the woman at the well, they had gone in the town to buy food. And they came back and they asked him if he was hungry. And he said, I have meat to eat of that you know not of. I've got meat to eat that you know not of. I've got something that sustains me. I've got a hunger to do something. And that's what I've got to do. He needed to help that woman. Are you here? He needed to share some good news with her. Lady, I know all about you. I know all about your past. I know all about your sin. But here I am. Here he is, the Messiah, right in her presence, letting her know what she really needed in her life. Are you here? Oh, thank God, brother and sister, thank God. We, we can be uh, like her. She forgot all about the natural water pots, didn't she? And she went into that town, and she began to testify to people. Come see a man that told me all that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Because I don't know who listened. I don't know who, who blew her off. It didn't matter. Brother and sister, she was doing what the Lord had put in her heart to do. She was letting other people know. Hallelujah! Church! Yes. Oh, thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We've got the bread of life. Yes. 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 We've got the bread of life. We have something, brother and sister, that brings us satisfaction. Yes. Not just playing church. Not just going through the motions. Yes. And if I am, God will let us know, won't he? Yes, he will. And we're in anything otherwise minded. Even God will reveal this to you. Yes. Whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Sometimes we maybe lose our focus. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we forget about the mission. And Jesus comes along and he says, wait a minute. Are you here? There's a world that is lost. There's a world that needs to know about him. We need to get our eyes back on what we have been called to do, church. There's no shortage of people. That's right. There's no shortage of people in Tucson that need to be saved. What is the answer? We see all these people, brothers and sisters, people, as Reverend was saying, that are broken. Their lives are absolutely broken. What is the answer? Is it a handout? Is it a social program? Is it the government? No. The answer is the answer for any human being. The answer is Jesus. The answer is Jesus. People need the Lord. They need the Lord. Brother and sister, we have what they need. As we said when we began the service, we've got that bread of life. We've got that light of the glorious gospel. We are vessels for the Lord. You know what a vessel is? It's something that you carry something in. God is carrying this gospel message in you, in me, in every other believer. God is taking it and God wants us to spread it. To this world. Amen. That woman was told by Jesus. And I'm getting ready to close. Who's going to sing? Sister Paul, you come and sing. Come on, honey. God bless my wife. Amen. I'm thankful for a, a wife that wants to serve the Lord with me. Yes. I appreciate that. Amen. Yeah, she's a beautiful woman. Yeah. Okay. But you know, you... There's something more important than beauty. Come on now. Yeah, you know, this world wants you to paint yourself up. Yes, they, they want do. you to try they to do, brother. look like everybody else and show yourself off. Huh? Be a woman of God. Be a woman of virtue. Yes. Now, go read Proverbs chapter 31. There's something far more beautiful than slapping some paint on your face. <laughs> That's right. All right. Amen. Now. Huh? Thank God, God to give you the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit. Amen. You can have the beauty of holiness in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Huh? You can be a woman of integrity and of character. Yes. So, Come on. A virtuous woman. Yes. Huh? Her price is far above rubies. It's far above gold. Amen. Come on now. Amen. 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 Pastor White, what's all that got to do with anything? You kind of changed, you kind of went off the tracks there in a different that's okay, it's all the word of God. And it's good. Yes. And we yes. need to know. Amen. Amen. Need to know because yes, if you're looking for a spouse, find somebody that wants to love Jesus like you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Find somebody that wants to love Jesus like you do. Yes. Amen. And serve God together and be happy yes. with the Lord. Be satisfied in Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. We can be. We can be. He told this woman, he said, if you drink of this water, you're going to thirst again. But if you drink of the water that I give unto you, you're never going to thirst and you're not going to come back to the wells of the world to draw anymore. Oh, isn't it true, brother and sister, when we came to Jesus, when we allowed him to save us from sin, brother and sister, and wash it away, when we were born again of the Spirit of Almighty God, we came to the realization, I know what life is all about now. I'm not looking anymore. I'm not like the world. Oh, they be seen and say that they can't get any satisfaction. Well, my friend, I am satisfied in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satisfied in him. I found what I was looking for. I'm not looking anymore. I'm just looking to him now. Tonight as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord. Have we found it? Are we looking unto him? He is that author and that finisher. He can keep you. He can cause you to be strong. He can give you victory over sin. We're going to come tonight and we're going to pray as she sings. As we prepare to enter into this new year, let's have a made-up mind. I'm going to serve the Lord yes, with yes. all of my heart. I'm going to love Him. I'm going to obey Him. I'm going to do His will. Let us pray tonight as she begins to sing. God bless you is our prayer. Let it close. Let it be